Comrades, I usually try and uh, open my address and give a message of positivity, a message of hope and the future as well as a praise of what has happened. So I'm not going to go into all that. I'm going to change things. I will talk about things that have happened like Liverpool win their sixth <laughs> European Cup and City winning the league. I'll even praise City, you know what I mean? I don't mind. We're on your tail for next year. With a... So, comrades, um, this year's had very little to be positive about. The only hope we have is a change of government. And so far as what has happened this year, the answer is very, very little. Irrespective of which side you are on the Brexit debate, Remainer or Lever, you cannot fail to have witnessed a year of political stagnation. While homelessness reaches epidemic levels and thousands sleep rough on our streets every single night, our politicians prefer to jockey for position in the lobbies of Parliament to align themselves behind the latest Brexit fad. While the number of visits to food banks has risen to 1.6 million, while the UN report that 40 million people in this country, the fifth richest, are living in poverty, while children are going to school hungry of a morning, and while devastating cuts to our benefit system condemn hundreds of thousands of families to financial ruin and destitution. Our politicians argue over red lines, backstops and ever-moving implementation dates. Our government has dedicated three years to the Brexit fiasco and virtually no time to the crisis that is affecting a major proportion of our society. Yes, coming to a sensible conclusion to the Brexit question is important, but feeding our people, housing and educating is much more of a priority for me. Two weeks ago, we witnessed the impending demise of British Steel announced. A major British manufacturing industry thrown to the wolves for the sake of an extra £25 million loan refused by our government. And it's strange, comrades, how the Tories can find a billion pounds to support themselves they can find billions to feed massive tax cuts to the already rich people in our society. But 25 million to keep 25,000 jobs in this country within our steel industry and ancillary work has gone by the way. Don't get me wrong, the blame doesn't necessarily lie with just Theresa May and her ragtag government. There are plenty of reasons to point the finger of blame to venture capitalists, or should we label them vulture capitalists, because that's what they seem to do. They pick over, they buy businesses cheap, and then pick over the carcass at the end and still make lots and lots of money. Grable, the company who did it, they bought British Steel for a pound. They've taken three million pound out of the business this year in administration costs and allowed it to wither on the vine. Their deep pockets appear to be the, for collecting cash and not for making donations to keep people in work. How much has that, this sham state visit for Donald Trump cost the taxpayers last week? Absolutely sick of listening to him on the television. Given the choice, would we, wanted to, would we have voted to fund the lavish functions that Donald Trump attended in this country? Or would we have said, let's put that money that was spent into saving British steel, and while we're at it, Bridge End as well, because that's going to need some funding in the future. This is a man who claims not to be a racist, but uses Twitter to attack Labour uh, Lord Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, who is a Muslim, to verbally abuse Meghan Markle, and who attends a state banquet where the only cabinet absentee and I can't stand the guy, was Sajid Javid. The only member of the cabinet who wasn't there, guess what, he's a Muslim. Don't get me wrong, I love Mr. Mr. Javid with all my heart. But it's to do with his heinous right-wing politics and not the colour of his skin, his creed or his religion. Trump, the man who banned seven countries of the Muslim faith from entering the USA, 
by default accusing all of being terrorists. The same guy who wants to build a wall between the USA and Mexico to prevent illegal immigration. But in reality, he, he divides families from across the border and he imprison imprisons young children and separates them from their parents. This is a man who seems not to view women as equals, but as a trophy to massage his already inflated ego. The man who likes his wife to walk 10 paces behind him so that she doesn't detract from the limelight that he glorifies in. I only wish that Theresa May had had the courage of conviction that Jeremy Corbyn has shown. You know, not surprisingly, Jeremy's come under savage criticism from the Tory media for refusing to attend a banquet and for asking to meet Trump privately. Personally, I'm not sure many of you had meetings with people, I'm sure you, had, you, you have had meetings with people who you don't have, with who you have diametrically opposed views. I know I've done it very many times. But I don't have to socialise with them. And I believe that's the stance that Jeremy Corbyn took. I'll talk to you about business, even though I don't like you, but I'm not going for a pint with you. That's exactly what Jeremy did. Um, I, per I personally believe that Jeremy should be applauded for the stance that he took uh, and you know, not continually castigated by the press and Theresa May's flunkies. I could go into a long tirade of support for both Jeremy and the Labour Party, but there will be plenty of opportunity during this week to heap the praise in big spadefuls. Instead, I want to consider the wider political landscape. In the Chinese calendar, 2019 is the year of the pig. And when talking about politicians, there's temptations to use puns like having their snout in the trough or their gammon opinions that seem to be the new word of the year. But I'm going to avoid such an open goal. Instead, in political terms, I believe 2019 is the year of the liar, the year of the clown, and both categories could have lots of candidates with many qualifying for both camps. But I'm going to concentrate on the big three. Clown, Bozo Johnson, Parker lookalike Farage, and the daddy of liars, Trump. Each one should not be underestimated. Every one of them is a gold medal liar, and every one of them has the power to destroy the very things that we as trade unionists hold dear. What can you say about Boris Johnson and his forked tongue? A man who was offered to supply the name and address of a journalist to his friend Darius Guppy to enable him to have him beaten up. This is a guy who's going to be standing as Prime Minister of this country, and he did that. And he laughs it off by saying, yes, but it didn't lead to anything. That means nothing. The intention was there to have a journalist beaten up by somebody else. And he was the one who supplied the name. He was sacked by the Times for writing a quote that was a total fabrication of the truth. This is a man who just before the Brexit vote had written two columns for his newspaper. One as a Remainer and one as a Lever. And depending on what the result was, he put the column out. So he was always going to be, if you like, for his followers on the side of the righteous. You know, he was summoned to court over the lies he told uh, and the phantasmagorical claims he made on the side of that bus before the Brexit vote. And OK, he got off at it. But I'm pretty sure there was right-wing influence in him getting away from that case. He lied all the way through it. He's been proven in a just, in, 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 through the justice courts that there was no case to answer. I think it probably had more to do with his membership of the Masons or something than absolute justice. Besides being a serial liar, he's also a serial racist. And no matter how many apologies he makes, these were not slips of the tongue. They were a panacea into the way that this man actually thinks. Calling immigrants benefit tourists. Black pe people picking innies and Muslim, Muslim women letterboxes. Absolutely despicable. And this is the man 
who wants to be not our Prime Minister, because he'll never be my Prime Minister, but he wants to be the Prime Minister of this great nation. You know, Eddie Mayer did a fantastic, and I'd urge anyone who hasn't seen it to go on YouTube and have a look at the Eddie Mayer uh, interview with him. With the understatement of the year, Eddie Mayer called him a nasty piece of work. And despite his litany of lies and racist insult, he is favoured to become the Tory leader and, by default, Prime Minister of our nation. And then, of course, there's Nigel Farage, who shared the same lies on the same Brexit buses that Boris espoused, who had consistently lied about election expenses, who made most of us celebrate by telling us he was quitting politics only to rise like a corrupt phoenix to lead the Brexit party. This is a man who wants the NHS privatised, who it appears would be in favour of the owning of handguns, a man who consistently refuses to answer questions on the financial ties he had with Adam Banks, who has supplied Farage with a multi-million pound house in central London, a top-of-the-range car with a driver, his own private security detail, and God knows how much money to help him run his bent campaigns and jaunts to rub shoulders with Donald Trump. This is a man who believes the way to avoid answering a question is to shout louder than the questioner and talk him out of time. I keep asking myself how anyone could have voted for him in the recent European elections, particularly working people. I don't see anything that's in working people voting for Nigel Farage. This is a man who is anti-EU, who wants our country to leave on the 31st of October 2019 with or without a deal, but who is happy to feather his own nest by getting elected to the very parliament he doesn't want us to have anything to do with. He's happy to take the €8,757 Euros a month salary, despite the fact that he has one of the worst attendance records of all uh, MEPs. He will get 4,513 extra euros a month for general expenses. And you know the worst thing about it is they don't have to declare them. They don't have to say what they're spending those euros on. All they have to say is they were legitimate expenses, and that's it. Uh, as an MP, MEP, he has no power to get us out of the EU, but will get rich while convincing people that he has. There's no room in British politics for him and his ilk. Finally, the Donald, supposedly the most powerful man in the world. But what were the American people thinking when he voted him in? It's like putting Dracula in charge of the blood bank. I've spoken enough about this egomaniac and his lies and deception, but I wanted to just to draw attention back to the so-called faux pas that he made last week, that of trade deals. On Tuesday afternoon, our NHS would be part of the future discussions into the amazing trade deal we were going to get from the USA. By Wednesday morning, the NHS was off the table. Irrespective, comrades, of how he backtracked, how it will be labelled as fake news, or how it was seen as a misinterpretation of the facts, somebody, somewhere, put that forward. The denial of the Tory leadership candidates that our NHS is not for sale at any price. You only have to look back at the lucrative parts of our NHS that have already been privatised and to see that the pledges that they've made mean absolutely nothing. The seed has been sown, comrades, and we have to fight to make sure that it doesn't germinate into a full-scale sell-off. Comrades, I want to conclude by saying that I worry about the future of our society, our workplaces, our trade unions and our young people if we do nothing to combat this tide of right-wing politics we are constantly battling against. The crocodile tears of Theresa May mean nothing to me, except it means the end of the most right-wing Prime Minister I can ever remember. The problem is that she'll be replaced by somebody even more right-wing, somebody with a stronger desire to repress workers' rights and probably with the same instability when it comes to command and the consensus within the fragile Tory party. Comrades, this, this week we will not only 
be laying the foundations for the creation of a fairer deal for all. We should also be planning the pathways to returning a socialist Labour government to this country. Not voting in favour of a motion and then forgetting about it when we, we need to do something about implementing it. We should, be, we should be thinking about what we do when we go back to the workplaces, back to our towns, back to our cities, and how we're going to promote and enact a progressive change in this country. If we dream long enough, comrades, and work hard enough, we can succeed. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Solidarity.